Well, hello everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Welcome back and welcome back to another Kitchen Counter Thrift Haul. It has been a few days since we've had a thrift haul and I'm excited to show you the items that I've got. Now before I begin, I will go ahead and tell you that everything that you see here is listed in the Old Curiosity Shop, the eBay store. And if you're interested in anything that you see, the link is in the description box below. Welcome new subscribers, welcome old subscribers. Merry Christmas, early Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, and let's see what's for sale. Now I'm so excited about this one particular item, I'm gonna jump in and talk about it first. And it's kind of what we'll say the elephant in the room. Um, well, actually it's the Art Deco goat pitcher in the room, P-I-T-C-H-E-R, and it's way back here. Let's pull this forward and talk about this monstrous looking thing. By the way, today's cup of coffee is actually uh, cold now, <laughs> and uh, it's in a beautiful uh, carnival glass goblet. Well, it's Christmas time, so I'm being Mr. Fancy Pants. Why not? Okay, what is this thing right here? Well, let me tell you what it is first, and then I'll tell you how I came to find it. It's a beautiful piece of 1930s Art Deco uh, pottery. Now this is made uh, circa 1930-35, and, uh, and it was made in Czechoslovakia. It's designed by the Dittmar Erbach uh, company. Now, originally the company was founded in the late 1880s in an area of Bohemia, which of course there was no Czechoslovakia at that time. And then in 1919, the uh, Erbach brothers joined with Rudolf Dittmar combined forces in uh, the newly founded uh, Czechoslovakia, and they formed uh, a new company, the Rudolf, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Dittmar Erbach company. I think they were taken over by the Nazis sometimes in, sometime in the 1930s, late 30s, but the late 20s to the late 30s, they produced some stunning Art Deco pottery, and here's an example of it. What do you think? <laughs> well, I love it. Some may say, gee, that's kind of ugly and hideous. Others are going to find uh, some appeal or actually be attracted to it. I'm attracted to it. Um, I'll let you see the mark on the bottom. Well, let me turn it around. I will let you see the mark on the bottom of it. Zoom in right there. Now, P-H-I-L-A, Phila, has nothing to do with Philadelphia. And we can see they're hand-painted in Czechoslovakia. And the letters E-R. Czechoslovakia and then a mold number. It's all hand painted. It's about a oh, it's about a nine inch pitcher and it happens to be in near mint condition. There's not a chip or crack on it, nor are there any uh, scratches or paint loss. Now, you might say, uh, when you found this piece, how in the world did you know what it was? Well, I have to tell you, I did find this in a thrift shop and I paid two or three dollars for it. Um, and I'll tell you that I immediately, I, I'm not a collector of this particular factory's work, but I knew what it was from years and years of studying books. Um, of course, when I started all this, there was no internet and I would save my money and go out to bookstores in the 1980s, early 80s, mid 80s, and buy mostly books on Art Deco and, um, you know, read up on the different designers and study the different forms and the color patterns that were popular. And uh, these colors are typical of what was made in uh, Czechoslovakia. And this is pretty typical of the work of the Dittmar Erbach company. Uh, after you have looked at five or 10 or 15 pieces of their work, you'll recognize it. Let's pause for a moment and take a look at some of their work.
Okay, so extremely, I was, okay, so I was extremely excited to find this. Um, and I should expect this to sell for somewhere between uh, 85 to $150. Okay, so let's put that back. That was probably the most unusual thing that I found that particular day in the thrift shop. Now you may recognize these two pieces of black glass I've had for a while and have decided to sell. This one is um, sometimes called the Loving Cup. It's made in the 30s by the L.E. Smith Company and it features dancing nymphs. Well, are they nymphs? I guess they're not. What are they? Well, they're scantily clad uh, women that are having a good time uh, frolicking around somewhere. And we'll say that it's the Art Deco style. There are no chips on it. That side is completely uh, smooth if you prefer the undecorated side. Okay, and that stands about eight inches tall. This one I feel also is probably Ellie Smith, but I don't know that for sure. And it's a large Art Deco vase made of glass, black glass with sterling silver highlights. You can see here, it looks very nice. And uh, it almost reminds me of, oh, an angry person with their hands on their hips. Does it not? Do you see that? Or is it, is it just me? Like something from Fantasia that would come to life and run around yelling at people. I like this vase a lot. Black of glass vase. And since we're talking about Czechoslovakia, let's look at another piece of uh, Czechoslovakian glass or bohemian glass. This is a small uh, decanter for wine or liquor. It's really a lavender color, which may not show up very well on this black countertop. And it's all been enameled, hand painted here. The matching stopper is nice to have. We'll turn it upside down, or turn it over and let you see. And there is a Czechoslovakia mark right there, which is very hard to tell. A little bit of cloudiness in the bottom of the decanter, but not on the sides. So crystal clear on the sides, as you can see. Just a little cloudiness on the bottom. And this was probably produced with little tiny uh, glasses to, to, to go with it that are long gone. That you've seen, and I finally got it listed, a little Vaseline glass hat which could be used as a toothpick holder or, uh, or whatever you care to use it for. Here's a ceramic peacock, which is made in Japan. And I think this is pretty. There are no chips or cracks uh, on this either. There's just a trace of the Japan sticker on the bottom. We can see there. Beautiful colors. Just a little decorative piece there mid-century piece, probably made after the war. Uh, late, mid-50s into the 60s, something like that, I would guess. And then I'm not sure of the maker back here, but it's a nice crystal, what could be called a center bowl in this style, really of a trophy. And it has an Art Deco look to it as well. So this is probably somewhere around 1925 to 1935. And uh, it's very pretty. It's narrow, so it could easily fit on a mantelpiece as well. I think I might have shown you this before, but I uh, have just recently decided to go ahead and put it up for sale. Okay, there is a tumble up to sit on your bedside table. So when you wake up hacking in the middle of the night, you take a swallow of water and you go back to sleep and you don't disturb your significant other. Okay, nice enameled Flowers painted on the sides of the tumbler and the uh, carafe. Chip and crack free, probably made in the 1930s or 40s. Um, Jasperware, or Wedgwood. Jasperware was made, was first made by Josiah Wedgwood in England, I think in the 1770 something. An English potter. And, um, it's an unglazed stoneware that's usually blue or white or green and white. There are some other colors. It's been made ever since. They're still making it today. These are not 
original pieces of Josiah Wedgwood, Wedgwood, or Jasper Ware. Don't know who made it, don't know when it was made, but they are well done, and they are two plaques that are in really good condition. Now on the back you'll see these crossed uh, arrows, and it appears as though whoever made this was trying to imitate um, a Meissen mark by the German company, Meissen. That's not what these are. And I'll slide them over here so you can have a better look. And we can see that they're, I guess, it is it the same couple? I think it's the same couple, but they've traded places. Okay, so, uh, yes, it's the same couple who have decided to trade places. And surprisingly enough, there are no chips on any of these points on either one of them. So these are all ready to be hung on the wall. And as I said, I am not sure who this the maker is, uh, but whoever it was, they wanted you to think, I think they wanted you to think that it was Meissen. And then here, Made in Japan is a nice little cottageware set. Uh, there's the sugar bowl, the teapot, the creamer, and this is a little extra. We'll talk about that in a second. Now these would have been made sometime between the two wars, so we're going to date these to right around 1930. Simply mark Japan on the bottom. A lot of this stuff was made in the late 20s through the mid 1930s. This is a matching set here. Obviously a thatched cottage with greenery and blue shutters on the windows, very English looking teapot with its lid, sugar bowl with its lid, and the, the creamer. There's one chip. No chips on this. No chips on this. The teapot has a chip where we, where we would expect it to be if there's going to be a chip, and it's right there. Okay, so it's been stained with coffee and tea over the, over the years, and uh, I don't think that chip is a deal breaker. What might be a deal breaker for some if they uh, planned on using this to serve tea out of is that because of the crazing, the inside of the teapot is heavily stained with old tea and coffee, as you can see, and we would expect that. Uh, so that may or may not be an issue for some. Oh, there's one more spot back here which is not considered damaged, but that's a spot where the uh, glaze didn't quite cover the pottery. We'll zoom in and you can see the colorful glaze underneath just didn't quite flow and cover up all the way. So that's part of the manufacture. Now these three pieces match. Uh, this one is not from the same set we can see. If you look closely there there are differences although you would hardly notice it. Um, and so I'm including this because it could be used to hold little uh, teaspoons or even used as a waste bowl for tea bags and uh, sugar packets and Splenda packets or that kind of thing. So all four of these will, will go together in one shot. And the last thing that I'd like to show you today is a beautiful compact uh, made by the Elgin Company. And here it is. Now, when you see these leaping gazelles, you say, ah, Art Deco, it must be from the 20s. It's actually not quite as old as that. I think this really dates to the, to the 50s. And the leaping gazelle was often seen in Art Deco items. In fact, there are, uh, there's a building just a few blocks from me built in the late 1920s and uh, carved into the, the front of the building is a huge leaping gazelle. So it was very popular in the 20s. There's a little scratch on the front there, but I love that it's in its original uh, carrying case. Now, see if I can do this with one hand. Okay, we can carry this like a purse. Can you imagine the woman who carried this on New Year's Eve, circa 1950? She must have been elegant. Now back here, is a place for her hair comb. 
And uh, we have a hair comb right here, which seems to be possibly original. And it's missing a few teeth, as am I. Now, come on and get out of there. There we go. So we have a tooth, a little bit of tooth loss, but it's definitely an old comb, and I have no reason to believe that it's not the original comb, so that's nice to have. And we'll now pull this out of its carrying case. And let you see it. Beautifully made. And it's marked American Elgin here on the side, which you may not be able to see. Push the button, open it up. Beautiful inside, beautiful interior. There's the, the uh, mirror. Now there's the compartment uh, that's immediately behind the mirror. Okay, so we'll, we'll close the mirror back up. And let's see, this, I cannot remember, it has escaped my mind, but this little clip, uh, good heavens, what was this clip for? Um, I've seen pictures of it and there was something specific that was clipped down in here, and right now I cannot remember. So you'll have to use your imagination, but there's a clip there that's designed, doggone it, what was this designed to hold? Some kind of of papers. Is it blotter? I don't know. Do you blot your lips? Ladies, help me out here. Some Something fit down in here and uh, uh, specific and I just can't remember what at the moment. I do know that this compartment was for a lipstick and I think this was originally manufactured with a matching uh, gold tone lips, lipstick case which is missing. And then here's a small case here for your false eyelashes or your medication. You know, I'm just making things up now. And when we pop this, we have a place for your powder. It's nice that there's a little, uh, I don't know, is that a powder puff? What do you do with this thing, ladies? You'll have to help me out. But there seems to be some powder residue in there, so we're gonna say this is where the rouge or the powder went. Beats me. Close that back up, and it says uh, American Elgin. Can you see that? I guess I'm jiggling too much, you probably can't see it. And so, snap that shut. I think that's the only major scratch on it right there on the front, but it appears to be, other than that, in very, very good condition. And there's no damage on this um, original handbag or carrier either. Okay, so sweet. We'll leave, we'll leave that like that. All right, so standing back up, there it is. Um, by the way, this is part of my home interior Christmas display, so that's not going anywhere. But everything else here on the counter is. This is Scott saying thanks for watching. Have a wonderful end to your weekend, and so long for now.